Uh, so we are going to be <clears throat> talking about Kafka connectors. Kafka connector is, uh, this is a continuation from the last week Kafka tutorial. Uh, this is a different topic that uh, we can talk about Kafka, the different way that we can uh, insert our data from the different approach that we can use to uh, consume data from Kafka as well as produce data into Kafka. Uh, so what's Kafka Connect? Kafka Connect is a free open source component of Apache Kafka that works as a centralized data hub uh, for simple data integration between databases, key value stores, search indexes, and file systems. Uh, so it does the same job that we've been uh, doing when we programmatically insert the data into Kafka as well as uh, consume data from Kafka. Kafka Connect is the other alternative that we can uh, insert data into our Kafka as well as uh, consume data from Kafka in an automated way without writing any code. It's almost a no-code solution uh, to produce data into Kafka as well as in the, uh, consume data from Kafka. Uh, so uh, connectors in AWS, uh, we can use the Kafka connectors. The way that we insert data into Kafka and ingest data from Kafka is by using connectors. And uh, we can uh, play around the different connectors that are available from Kafka Connect uh, locally on a Docker environment or on uh, different cloud environments. Uh, since we are using, uh, since you are using uh, AWS managed service for the Kafka deployment for uh, uh, for this challenge. We can. We also have different connectors that are available in AWS, and a connector in AWS integrates the external system and Amazon services with Apache Kafka by continuously uh, copying string data from a data source into uh, Apache cluster or continuously copying data from your cluster into data sync. So we have two different types of connectors in uh, Apache Kafka uh, in AWS that we can use. The first one is the source connector, and the second one is the sync connector. What the source connector does is it will listen data or it will pull data from different sources that are provided and uh, it will dump the data or produce the data into Kafka while the sync connector uh, will consume data from Kafka in real time and uh, load the data into our database, data warehouse or our preferred destination. Uh, so Kafka Connect, a connector can also perform lightweight logic such as transformation, format conversion, or filtering data before delivering the data to a destination. So uh, as I have said before, we have two types of connectors. The first one is the source connector, and the second one is the sync connector. Uh, so what we've been doing in the previous week before using Kafka Connect is uh, we've been using Airflow to orchestrate the task. So Airflow ingested the data from the Kafka, and then uh, we applied some kind of transformation by using Spark, by using Spark or other transformation tools. Then finally, uh, loaded the data into our data warehouse or database. So, in this case, when using Kafka Connect, we'll be using uh, the Kafka connector. It's not powerful and it won't perform uh, powerful transformations like Spark or other transforming tools. But uh, we can implement a very minor transformation tools like uh, date formatting, column formatting, type casting, and so on. And the source connector pulls data from the data source and push this data into a cluster, while the sync connectors pull data from the cluster and uh, from the cluster and push this data into a sync. So we have two types of connectors. The first one is the source connector, and the second one is the sync connector. The only job of the source connector is to pull data from our source and load it into Kafka, while the sync connector will uh, ingest or consume data from Kafka and then finally load it into our database or data warehouse. Uh, so Kafka Connects is focused on streaming data to and from Kafka, make, making it simpler to write high quality, reliable, and high performance collector plugins. Uh, and Kafka Connect also enables the framework to make uh, to make guarantees that are difficult to achieve using other frameworks. It's an integral component of an ALT pipeline when combined with Kafka in the stream uh, processing framework. Uh, so uh, if, we if we don't use Kafka Connect as our uh, in our ALT or ETL pipeline, what we would do is we will manually use different uh, code, se uh, code sections to uh, produce data into Kafka and as well as uh, read data or consume data from Kafka. But when using Kafka connectors, the different available Kafka connectors, uh, with almost no code 
uh, written, we can implement the ALT pipeline easily uh, by just focusing on the business logic. Uh, so since we are going to use uh, our JS uh, for this week as our database, we are going to use the AWS RJs. Uh, we can use the Postgres sync connector. Uh, maybe before I go on to the uh, Postgres sync connector, uh, let me just show you the different available uh, the different available uh, the different available connectors. You can go to Confluent IO. .tab. Let me share the link. Uh, so from Confluent I would, uh, slash hub, we can find different connectors that are available. So there is the source connector and the sync connector. So uh, we have lots of source connectors that are available or that are already built by Confluent. We can also go ahead and build our own connector uh, if the connector that we want uh, is not available from uh, the Confluent source. So we have a sync connector uh, to Azure Data Lake Storage. So what a sync connector does is it will uh, ingest data or consume data from Azure Data Lake and sync it into, uh, not from Azure Data Lake, but it will consume data from Kafka, then sync it into Azure Data Lake. Uh, the, there's the strict sync connector, which uh, will consume data from Kafka, then sync it or load it to Azure, uh, to AWS S3. And we also have different available connectors that we can use. The same is true for the source connectors. So we have the source connector for Zendesk, NTTT, uh, Salesforce, DataGen, Google Cloud Storage for the for GCP, for Azure, for AWS, and for uh, other different databases that we can use. So for Postgres, we can have we have a source connector as well. Uh, we can use the JGBC driver that's available. Uh, JDBC. So uh, we have the JDBC source in sync connector. So by just installing this specific connector plugin, we can ingest data from JDBC databases and in sync uh, into JDBC databases. So we can, uh, for example, ingest data from a Postgres database as well as sync into a Postgres uh, database by using the JDBC connector. We also have connectors for other databases, data warehouses, and uh, different types of sources that we might uh, uh, that we might be working on when working on an on analytics pipeline. Okay, what, Mohammed? So, uh, uh, I'm sorry, can you redefine what connector is? Okay, so a connector is the tool that will connect uh, Kafka with the source or the sync that we are working on. So it might be a source connector. A source connector connects our source. Our source might be uh, maybe an Azure Blob storage or different databases that we are working on, and it will connect the source with Kafka. So source connector will be able to ingest data from our source, for example, Azure Blob storage, then sync it into Kafka. So it will it will read all of the data that we have in Azure Blob storage and it will ingest that data and write it into Kafka. All of the actions or all of the read and write will be performed in real time. So whenever someone, for example, in Azure, you have different blobs, the files are, uh, uh, the files are in, a, in a blob format. So every time someone creates a new blob, the Kafka source connector will be able to read that in real time and dump it into the Kafka. Then if you have a different sync connector, that sync connector will be able to read from Kafka, from a specific Kafka topic, then uh, dump it into our destination, into our preferred destination. It might be a data warehouse or a database. So connectors are tools that will just connect Kafka to source or Kafka to sync. Mohamed? Yes, yes, I get that. Thank you. OK. Uh, so. Uh, uh, from Confluent Hub, we can find multiple source and sync connectors. So for every, for almost every database that you'll be working on, you can find a source and a sync connector. But if uh, maybe at some, at some point in time when working as a data engineer or a different job, you might, uh, uh, you might work with a, with a data source or data 
a destination that doesn't have a connector. In that case, it's also possible to build your own custom connector. Uh, so for RDS, one thing that's possible is to use Postgres Sync connector. So Postgres Sync connector and other uh, databases like MySQL and uh, similar databases are in the, JD, in, in the JDBC connector. So if you install the, the JDBC connector, the Postgres, the MySQL and similar databases are uh, will be included by default and you can use the Postgres, the My, uh, MySQL and other connectors that are available in JDBC. So the Kafka Connect Postgres, uh, the Kafka Connect Postgres uh, sync connector for Confluent Cloud moves data from an Apache Kafka topic to a Postgres database. And it will write the data from a topic that is specified in the configuration file from Kafka to the table that's specified uh, uh, in Postgres database. And one thing that's, uh, that's available is it will create the table by default if uh, if uh, if the if the table doesn't exist in Postgres, so table auto creation is one thing that's possible uh, when using the sync connector, and it also has limited auto evolution uh, that can be specified in the configuration file. So, for example, uh, if you change the schema at some point when writing to your database or to your Kafka, uh, this specific sync connector will be able to handle that evolution and will. Uh, add an additional column to your database, and your schema will be registered based on uh, the new schema that you have written into Kafka. So some of the uh, some of the key features that we can talk about uh, from Postgres in Connector is first, it provides idempotent rights. So when working uh, in any type of data engineering pro uh, projects, one of the important thing is to keep our data idempotent. So by the important, we mean that we don't want any type of duplicates in our data, and uh, we want atomic data transfer, data load, uh, and data transformation. So if some part of the data isn't being transferred or loaded due to connection or some other errors, we need to make sure that none of the data is being copied or written into our destination. And also, we don't want to have uh, duplicate data when copying or transferring our data from our source to our sync. So, uh, Postgres Sync Connector provides idempotent rights. The other thing is, as you have discussed, uh, table in column auto creation is something that's possible when using the Postgres Sync Connector. It supports multiple tasks. We can work uh, on concurrent tasks. We can configure uh, multiple Sync Connectors at the same time, and uh, those Sync Connectors can run parallelly when hosted uh, on our EC2 or different uh, virtual machines. It also it's also possible to define schemas of our destination so that we can be sure that the schema is always consistent when writing and reading from that destination. Uh, Kafka Connect deployment. So uh, one of the possible thing, one of the options to, uh, to uh, one of the options that we have when working with Kafka Connect is to uh, just use a standalone uh, connector on our local machine and experiment with that. And once we are ready, we can deploy that uh, uh, to a production environment. So connectors in tasks are logical units of work that run as a process. And the process is called a worker in Kafka Connect. And there are two modes for running workers. The first one is, as I've uh, said earlier, the standalone mode. And the standalone mode is only useful for development and testing Kafka Connect. You want to make sure that the uh, Kafka source connector works perfectly and it uh, will load data from your source into a Kafka topic that is specified on the configuration file. And as well as the sync connector will work perfectly as required by the business need. Uh, and it can load data from the Kafka topic and dump it into the destination. So uh, in the standalone mode, uh, we'll be using a single worker. So we only have a single worker, while in the distributed mode, we can have uh, multiple workers. In the distributed mode runs connect workers on four nodes, which, for, which form a connect cluster. And the Kafka Connect distributes running connectors across the cluster. You can add or remove nodes as you receive all of. So when, uh, uh, in most production environments, you won't, uh, you won't have a standalone mode, but rather, uh, you most probably will be working with distributed with distributed mode, which runs on different nodes. Uh, multiple workers will be running on different nodes, and they will form a cluster. And the data that's being sent or received from the Kafka uh, will be distributed equally to all of the nodes. 
some of the advantages of using Kafka Connect uh, are its data centering pipeline. It connects uh, it connect uses meaningful data abstraction to pull or push data to Kafka. So Kafka Connect will abstract all of the uh, the implementation the code implementations that we've been working on by uh, by programmatically inserting data to our Kafka topic as well as uh, reading data or consuming data from the Kafka topic. It's flexible and scalable, especially on the distributed mode. It can be easily scaled and it's also very flexible. We can reuse uh, a single Kafka connector and it's also extensible. Uh, there are different resources shared in the PPT. Uh, maybe I can share that to you once we have, uh, uh, once we finish the session. So now we can, uh, let me just give you a very simple demo on how we can load data from uh, Kafka to our sync connector, which is the RDS in this case. Let me stop presenting and share my entire screen. Okay. Mm. I'll go to this code. Uh, okay, so uh, maybe let me just show you the Docker configuration that you can use if uh, you were to host Kafka, Zookeeper, and other services. Uh, you can use Docker. This is the DBZM connector. DBZM is just a source connector for Postgres. It will ingest data from Postgres in real time and uh, and dump it into the Kafka topic that is specified. So if you use DBZM, you need the Postgres. We are running the Postgres, the Kafka, the Zookeeper, and the schema registry uh, in the Docker in the Docker Compose and running them uh, uh, together. So uh, we'll need the DBZM. DBZM is just a source connector. We should load data from our source, then write it to Kafka. And we need schema registry. Uh, for every sync and source, source connector that are uh, related to databases, we need to specify the schema. So for that, there is the schema registry available in Confluent. Uh, we can also uh, use AWS Glue. For this case, we might use AWS Glue. Uh, the job of or the function of schema registry is to register your schema and make sure that the incoming and outgoing data are consistent to the schema. Uh, so what you would know, maybe let, let's just go to the manual implementation and then I can go over the source connector. But since for this week, we only need a sync connector that will load data from Kafka to our destination, which is RDS. Uh, let me just show you the basic configuration that uh, that we'd use. Uh, for this case, I've, uh, I've spinned up my local uh, Kafka server, but I will be connecting directly to the RDS, to the remote RDS. So after Kafka, after I've spin up, I've spinned up Kafka, uh, what we need to specify is the first thing is we need to specify the schema properties. So the schema is something that will ensure that uh, your data is is consistent and all of the incoming data is uh, is in a format that your database will be expecting. So uh, in the schema property, the first thing that we will specify is the bootstrap server. So when connecting to the managed uh, service, you have your own uh, bootstrap server. But since I'm using my local Kafka, I will be using the local host. Then I'm converting the data into Avro converter in, in Avro format. Avro format is just another way of uh, uh, formatting our data in the JSON format. So you'll mostly be working with Avro, for Avro or Parquet format when working with Kafka and Kafka connectors. So what this will do, what this code section will do is it will convert uh, the data into Avro format, all of the incoming data into Avro format. I might just be sending that in a JSON format and the Avro converter will convert that into Avro format. It will serialize it at first and then on the consumer side, it will deserialize the uh, serialized data. And then finally, I will specify the offset uh, where my offset will live. And then uh, something that's important is to provide the plugin pass. So the plugin is the connector that we are going to use for uh, this specific connector. In our case, uh, we are going to use the JDBC connector, which will provide the source in the sync uh, for Postgres. So we can download that manually from Confluent Hub. Uh, 
from Confluent Tab after searching for JDBC connector source and sync, I can go ahead and download that manually, or I can also install using Confluent Tab if Confluent Tab is uh, if Confluent is installed on your local machine. So what I did was I downloaded the, the jar file. This will give you a jar or zip file. Uh, I, I downloaded that manually to my machine and set up that path. And in the plugin dot path, I'm providing the path of the plugin that I downloaded. So this schema is something that uh, will be uh, required when sending data into Kafka and reading data from Kafka. So for that, we need to specify in my conf when I start my confluent, my local confluent. Uh, you can see that schema registry is also started. So by default, confluent ships uh, with uh, schema registry. But in other cases, you might need to install confluent schema uh, uh, when you are working on EC2 virtual machine or other Games. Uh, so after we have defined our schema, the next thing that we need to do is uh, we need to define our uh, uh, our properties or our sync connector properties. So we can give it a default name. Uh, for this, I can just say Kafka PG sync connector, maybe uh, Mela Mela Kafka uh, Postgres sync connector. And the connector class for this case is you can find all of these configurations from the official Confluent uh, documentation. So for Postgres sync connector, uh, we are using io.confluent connect JDBC JDBC sync connector. If you are using JDBC source connector, this will be JDBC source connector. And the tasks.max is one in this case, but you can also increase the number of tasks that are being run uh, at the same time. And the insert mode uh, for this case is insert. So uh, as I've specified on the uh, PowerPoint presentation. One of the advantages of using Kafka Connect is it provides data item potency. So if I, we can also change this to absurd. So what absurd will do is it will check for the primary key in your database or not in your database, but in your table. And if there is a duplicate or if the, if an incoming data has the same, uh, has the same data as your primary key, that will replace the existing data. Uh, it won't create any uh, duplicate. So when we use absurd in the insert mode, it will replace all of the duplicates that are uh, coming from your source. It might be from your Kafka. But if you use insert, uh, it won't create a duplicate. It, it, it might create a duplicate. So it will just insert data without checking the previous existing data. But if you use absurd as the parameter, it will make sure that no duplicate will be created when uh, create, when inserting data into your table. So the second thing that we'll do is we'll provide that we'll provide the topic. So in our case, we might just subscribe or consume uh, from Mela from Mela underscore test underscore topic. Then uh, these are also the other required parameters that we need to specify. The first thing is the connection URL. Since you are, I'm connecting to Postgres uh, to the R days that is hosted on AWS, I will specify the connection parameter to my R days to the R days that's specified. Uh, in this case, I'm using uh, another user for your uh, for your, for each team. I think there is uh, a user and password provided, so I'll. Uh, also specify my username as well as my password and auto create is true. So what this does is it will create the table if the table doesn't exist. And I've specified uh, my table name here. So this is the table that is going to be created if it doesn't exist, but if the table exists, it won't create the table name. So for this case, we might say Mela table. And this is the property that uh, th that's required to be specified when connecting uh, to a sync connector. So we need the table name, we need the connector class. If this connector class doesn't exist in our pass, uh, it will raise an error. We need the connection URL uh, to the point that, to the destination that we are connecting uh, our Kafka sync connector, we need the username, we need the password, and we can also specify other parameters. Then, okay. Maybe let me use terminal. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, 
when because I have downloaded Confluence connector, uh, I have uh, I'm running the connector on my local machine. I will use the sun, the standalone property, which is uh, which can be run on the on the local machine. But when it's deployed, uh, will most probably be working with a distributed uh, connector. So I will specify the standalone connector. Then the next thing we need to specify is the schema property. So this schema property will validate our data when it uh, when it waiting when it ingests data from our Kafka topic. So uh, is that a question? Is it possible to create the database locally using a SQL? Uh, yes, yes, that's possible. So maybe you might connect to your local database. You might specify uh, the connection URL, the local connection URL, and you might set up a source connector to uh, to your Kafka topic. And then maybe you might also have another sync connector, which will uh, consume or subscribe to that specific topic and write it to AWS. AWS RDS, maybe Redshift or other database hosted on your EC2 machine. Uh, okay, so then I will specify the schema, the schema the properties. Then finally, uh, my configuration, which is the configuration for uh, my sync connector, is k one of properties. And this will load, and this will set up and make sure that the connection is successful. If uh, the credentials that I've provided is not correct, or if the connector doesn't exist, this will raise an error and it won't uh, work. Okay, so now I'm connected. Uh, I've also logged in into the Postgres database. So yes, I've logged in into uh, the database URL, that's the RDS URL, and I've given the port and the user, and I've provided my password. So now let's just check if we have uh, a table. So. In our, our days, uh, we can see that we have one table, which is the Mela, which is the Mela TV. Uh, the new table that I'm going to create is Mela underscore table. And uh, what I will do is I will uh, write into my Kafka topic, then the, the data that is in my Kafka topic should be uh, written into this, uh, into my our days. It, it should create a new table, then, uh, then write, uh, the records in that table. So uh, uh, what I will do for now is for, because I'm using the console, I will provide the Kafka Avro console producer. So the Kafka Avro console producer uh, takes the same argument that the normal Kafka setup will take. Uh, I will give the bootstrap server. I'm connecting to my local host Kafka uh, configuration. Uh, and the topic, let me maybe create a new Kafka topic. And uh, let's use my latest topic. Is one partition and is one replication factor. Okay, so this already exists, maybe. Okay. This already exists, that's okay. I will just write to this topic and uh, I will consume to this specific topic. Let me change topic. So uh, uh, I'm going to write, I'm uh, creating a producer that will write to this specific topic. And uh, in the schema definition, what we'll do is we'll specify the schema of our data the type of data that you are expecting from our source. So if you are ingesting from Kafka, uh, we need to make sure that all of the data is consistent and uh, according to the schema that that is defined. So we, we can uh, provide the property argument and then uh, define the schema. So in the value.schema, uh, we'll give it a type of record. I have that on my, yes, on my base code. So in the Avro schema, uh, we'll give the type that it's uh, a record and the name of the schema, maybe just Kafka underscore deployment. And then the fields, these are the fields that we are interested in. 
the first field uh, is the ID, so we'll give the name, then the value is ID, and its type is int. So if uh, if we get a data that is not consistent with the schema that's provided, the, the schema registry will show an error and that won't be inserted into our database. In the second, uh, the second field we are giving is the name field and it's a, it's of a type string. So uh, what schema registry does is after being converted into a row format, it will check that the column, each column is in the format that is defined in the schema and it will also check to the number if the number of columns are matching uh, with the schema definition. So this is what we are doing when we are giving the value dot schema, and I will just press enter. So this is now ready to produce data into our Kafka topic. I will then uh, consume from this specific topic. So uh, just to make sure, let me. Yes, we only have one uh, table. So what we are expecting now is we expect uh, Mela underscore table to be created. Maybe let's, yes, Mela underscore table is different from Mela TV. Uh, so once I start producing, let me start consuming from the topic. Okay, so I will now provide the name. The first is not the name, but the ID. So maybe ID of, uh, for then uh, the name, mm, maybe John, and I will send this to my, and my consumer will receive that in real time. Then now if we check our tables, uh, we can see that uh, Mela underscore table has been created uh, in my RJs, in our RJs. So we can see that uh, the Kafka Connect is reading or consuming or pulling the, the for data changes uh, from the Kafka topic and consuming that in real time and uh, writing it into uh, our destination, which is our race. So without even writing any other code, Kafka Connect can automatically ingest data from uh, from our source or from Kafka, then in, dump it into our destination. So uh, if I select all from Mela. You can see that uh, uh, one has been added with an ID for. If I now go ahead and add uh, another, maybe with an ID 18 and name look. has been added and our consumer has received that data. And if I now select again uh, from my RDs, we can see that Hino has been added uh, into the table. So Kafka Connect provides almost a no-code solution uh, to dump data from our Kafka into our destination. And Kafka Sync, K Kafka Sync will load data from our Kafka topic and load it to our destination. And Kafka Source will be able to load data from our source, from the variety of sources that are available, and load it into our Kafka topic. The same thing can be implemented uh, in AWS in the uh, managed service. Since we are using the managed service, the first thing that we can do is uh, we can, uh, for the schema registry, we need to, um, okay, I won't be providing this now, but uh, for the schema registry, one thing we can do is we can, uh, we can start the Confluent Schema Registry on the on the EC2 instance. So for each group, each group can start the Confluent Schema Registry. The other thing that's possible is to use the AWS Glue. So by using AWS Glue, we can AWS Glue serves as Schema Registry. So we can register our schema on AWS Glue and then connect it to the managed uh, Apache Kafka. Then uh, all of our sources will be at first be uh, inserted into Kafka topic, then uh, Kafka Connect, Kafka Sync Connector will be able to read that from Kafka in real time and dump it into our database, which is our days and to the table that's specified. And to uh, to make sure that uh, our data pipeline is idempotent, we can provide the absurd property. When we change the insert mode to absurd, we need to provide the primary key because in a relational database, 
uh, idempotence is being checked by checking for the primary key. So every time a new data is uh, is inserted into the Kafka topic, the Kafka sync connector will check for that specific uh, data's ID or primary key. And if that primary key, if that ID exists in the topic, if that if that topic's ID exists in our database or in our table, it won't uh, create a duplicate, but rather it will replace the value that is already in the database. And uh, by that, it will make sure that our data pipeline is idempotent. Okay, I think that's it from my side. Uh, any question? Mohammed? Yes, um, I want you uh, to rephrase or uh, re-explain uh, the whole the whole thing. Uh, for example, can you can you get back to the code? Okay. So um, basically, if we want to implement a Kafka connector, so we have to write the the connector uh, properties file, and we have to write the key schema properties, and uh, all of that should be. Um, in a world in a world file so can we put that in in airflow or it should be uh on on other file uh okay so what kafka con what kafka connect is doing is it's uh yes it's an alternative to what you've been uh doing when using airflow so airflow is an orchestrator and it will orchestrate the tasks and it will on the scheduled interval it will uh maybe trigger some task, some script, and that script might ingest data from the Kafka topic and write it into the destination. But when using uh, Kafka Connect, we don't need any other orchestration tool. So Kafka Connect will be able to read the data from the Kafka topic and dump it into the destination without uh, requiring any other external orchestration tool. So these actions, this implementation is being uh, performed in real time rather than being implemented in batch processing formats. So when using Airflow, you will most probably work with batch. So you like, you'll have a batch of data and you, all of the transformations logic and other loading uh, logics will be implemented in batch rather than uh, being implemented in real time. But when using Kafka Connect, all of those logics will be implemented so in real time. This is running already in real time uh, on top of Docker, right? Okay. Yes, most probably, yes. I get that. Thank you. But w when using AWS Glue and uh, Amazon's uh, managed service, uh, AWS will handle the Kafka deployment and other logics, and Glue will also be able to handle the schema registry and the related to, uh, the related uh, things that are uh, required to verify your schema as well as your connector properties. You just need to provide the connector property for your uh, connector and AWS will be able to handle all of those implementation. So can you uh, rephrase also or re-specify what is the difference between standalone and distributed? Okay, so uh, standalone is mostly a single uh, connect cluster, a Kafka connect cluster, and you'll mostly be using that uh, on your local machine, but uh, the distributed one runs in clusters. You will have multiple nodes to run uh, let me go back to the slide. And the deployment, yes. So you'll have multiple uh, clusters to run your Kafka Connect, and it will make sure that your data is distributed and uh, will always be running even if one of the nodes goes down. So we'll be using the distributed mode when uh, when we are working in a production environment. Okay, I get that. So. Basically, the most important files to be uh, initialized in order to, for the connector to run uh, is the properties file and the scheme. Yes, yes. Okay, I get that. Okay, Hungry? Um, so my question was uh, with regard to when you are running the, the console, um, would, I, I wanted to see if you could run with, uh, like on the JSON file you are creating, um, you create an entry that has more, I guess, 
table, like columns, like ID, name, and age, um, and how that would, um, I guess, evolve. Oh, okay. So that was already pre. Yes, because we are expecting uh, just oh, an ID field and a name field. We are specifying the schema for the name and the ID field. And uh, the schema registry will always validate the input from the Kafka topic and make sure that it's according to the schema that's defined. So if you try to enter um, an entry that has ID, name, and age that is not um, part of this uh, the schema registry, uh, it's not going to be put into the database. Uh, actually, the schema will the schema registry will fail, and that won't be inter that won't be inserted into the database. One thing that you can do is you can also add uh, optional uh, fields. So maybe let's say you have an age field, and you can make that optional. So schema registry will make sure that that will uh, that schema registry will consider for additional fields that. Uh, you might not require when inserting to your database, and the evolved property will come handy when you when you, when creating the first record. So, if the first record doesn't include the age column or the age field, on the second insertion that contains the age column, it will auto evolve and it will create a new column on that table, and that specific column will be inserted into your table. Okay, so like so far um, in this, uh, the schema registry, what it has um, are the primary keys. So like you can't, um, like the, I guess in SQL, what would be not null. So like you can't oh. enter a value unless, you can't enter a record unless these this, uh, columns are filled in. Um, and yes. then for the optional, um, it would be the ones which can be null. Mm. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, first up, and we can go to the next tutorial. Okay, uh, I think it was on the k1.properties. Maybe okay. if you can go there, uh, sorry. Yeah, so I can see here there's uh, one topic and hmm. there is one table, right? What if yes. we, uh, we want to implement several tables? Uh, that's the uh, first question. And on the Avro schema JSON. I also see uh, it's the yeah. I so this is for one table, right? What we what if if we have several tables, and where does the lightweight uh, transformation comes in? Uh, okay, so uh, for the first question, I'm not exactly sure about the tables. Maybe we will have to. Uh, uh, we'll have to make some, we'll have to research on that. But for the topics, you can consume from multiple topics. You can just separate your topics with a comma and uh, insert different multiple topics. But I'm not exactly sure if it's allowed to uh, insert into different tables. But you can consume from multiple, uh, from multiple uh, topics. So uh, for the transformation part, you can make, you can apply the transformations. Maybe let me. Uh, connect. Uh, so, uh, Yes, can you can see my screen, right? Yes. Yes. So uh, you can provide uh, additional parameters on your uh, configuration file. So uh, you'll first need to provide you'll first need to provide the transforms and the type of transform that you want. So it might be cast. It might be uh, maybe removing a record or a very simple trans transformation that. Uh, uh, you will require when working with your data. So you'll also specify the transform.cast.type and uh, this specific value is the value that you want uh, the transformation to happen into the column. So you'll specify the column that you want it to be transformed. So for the name column, you might want to cast it to the string and for the ID, you might want to cast it to an integer and so on. So 
you will provide these configuration files for each of the transformations that you require. So for example, if you have 10 elements or 10 fields, you'll specify uh, these transformations for all of the fields that you want uh, for the transformation to happen in those fields. So as no, you can I'm see, before it was an integer, then okay. it's gone. No, I was Go. just saying uh, we are going to write this code on which file? On the avion.schema or the... That's, that's going to be written on the on the, uh, on the schema properties, on the Avro. This is just for uh, for the demo, but this is written uh, when you are going to produce to your table. So you'll specify this schema by just separating it by comma. You'll be providing that uh, uh, in the Avro schema. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, I think we can. Okay, great. Uh, we can proceed to the next presentation. Uh, maybe you should have joined the call. Yes. Okay. Uh, maybe you will give us a session on Lambda. Uh, I will mute myself and you can start the presentation.